A discussion on 5G and Mitchell. Well, I want to thank you for this opportunity to get the abundance of scientific proof regarding the lack of safety of wireless communications to you and the public. I'm sure you're tired. It's been a long day. Uh, in regards to the myth of safety, as outlined in Verizon's information, I would simply point out two things. One, they claim that their signal is only a fraction of what the FCC allows. However, the limit that the FCC set was astronomically higher than what safe levels really are. And per the court case, an 11,000 pages of scientific evidence that claim is substantiated. Two, Verizon and AT in particular are using C-band, which is a much higher hertz. They're actually using gigahertz rather than <coughs> megahertz. This causes more damage because the waves are even shorter, or millimeter waves. Verizon and AT&T are using 30 to 300 gigahertz, which is almost 100 times what 4G was using. And 4G was also above safe levels. Some cell phones from the last few years have been found to operate at five times the legal limit. I can't imagine how much higher than the legal limit the new 5G phones actually are. Um, I've used my meter to test other people's 5G phones and found they maxed my meter out, which is more than 100 times what scientists consider safe. Because it maxes out, I have no idea how much over 100 times safe it actually is. The FCC is using guidelines from 1996, which means they are using data on wireless safety from pre-1996. They simply ignored the 11,000 pages of scientific evidence that has been brought to light from scientific studies done since that time, which proves without a doubt that wireless communications are unsafe. The Children's Health Defense and the Environmental Health Trust jointly sued the FCC in federal court and won as I submitted in my agenda information. The FCC was ordered to go back and look at those 11,000 pages to redetermine safe levels. You may think the FCC was unaware of this information, but not only is it their responsibility to know it, they were made aware of the many people whose health was suffering from wireless through the FCC open forum online asking if people were having any issues, but the FCC chose to ignore those pleas for help as well. The U.S. Government Accountability Office told the FCC in 2013 to review their 1996 limits in light of new research, but the FCC ignored this as well. The FCC also claims to follow the WHO in regards to wireless communications, considering the WHO has participated in studies that show harm from wireless and 5G, as well as cautioning that 5G causes harm. It shows the FCC ignores all authority, and thus their claims of safety are negated, further showing that all information of facts versus myths from the cell phone companies is based on false parameters. Why would the FCC ignore such information when they knew it existed? What are the they are what is called a captured agency. An extremely large portion of their funding comes from the sector that they are supposed to be regulating. Just how common is electrohypersensitivity? It ranges from 1.5% in Sweden up to 13.3% in Taiwan. Even if we assumed only 0.1% of the population was affected, that would be 7 million people. I would venture to say that number is falsely low to, due to the lack of people being able to get a diagnosis for their symptoms. Most people I know who are suffering have no diagnosis and have not informed any agency that might calculate these numbers of their condition. If you compare that to the WHO Global Burden of Disease Report, it shows a similar incidence to strokes. However, electrohypersensitivity is even more common than congestive heart failure or Parkinson's, and it is more common than breast, lung, prostate, colon, cancer all combined. Since 1990, there's been a rise in fibromyalgia of 7,727%, an 11,027% jump in chronic fatigue, a whopping 10,833% increase in youth bipolar diagnoses, a 430% rise in sleep apnea, 819% rise in ADHD, and 299% increase in Alzheimer's, and 449% increase in osteoarthritis. Ever wonder why so many people have joint replacements? Why there are so many children with ADHD? So does it really make sense to ignore such numbers so an industry can rake in profits while creating health care crises for millions of people, which costs our country money in health care dollars and lost wages of those affected when the industry sits back and counts their money? Sadly, children are, at the, most, are the most at risk from EMF and 5G. I would also remind you of New Hampshire's halt on 5G for safety reasons. The City Board of Health in Pittsfield, Massachusetts voted to send a case, uh, cease and desist uh, regarding a Verizon cell tower after several neighbors became sick when a cell tower was powered up in that area. 
as well as New Hampshire Legislature, has voted to send historic legislation on cell tower radiation to interim study after hearing extensive testimony regarding the health effects of cell tower radiation, which I included that information as well. A group of mayors in Ohio are working to stop 5G from coming into that area and the Massachusetts Medical Association voted to adopt a resolution calling for more research and evidence-based data on the effects of radio frequency radiation on human health. Clearly they've seen enough evidence to warrant such research. I'm not against internet, phones, or any other devices people use on a daily basis. All I'm saying is that we need to do it safely and 5G, 5G is simply not safe. 5G is not just the next step in wireless, like going from 3G to 4G. The step from 4G to 5G is astronomically higher because they are using wavelengths that are much shorter and known to be much more harmful to humans than 4G. 4G is still harmful, just much less so. Once you have symptoms, it means your DNA has been damaged and it's too late. You will never be the same again. When you consider how many teens and adults take their phones to bed with them or put them next to them on a headboard or shelf or a nightstand, we need to be concerned about how many people are going to be sick in the future from this when seven million people already are. I will leave you with this. In September 2017, more than 180 scientists and doctors from 35 countries called for a moratorium on 5G. Additionally, 230 international EMF scientists appealed to the UN in 2015 regarding non-ionizing EMF exposure. In February 2019, the FCC admitted that there were no 5G safety studies conducted by their agency, nor were they planning to do any. If you are still trusting the FCC for your safety and no alarms are going off in your head about this, they should be. I want to show you what she was talking about. This, for example, this is the bio-initiative from 2012. This is about 1,700 pages. This was a rationale for biologically based exposure standards for low intensity electromagnetic radiation. Well, what did that entail? Let me get to that here. Okay, so this included 14 scientists, health and public policy experts to document the scientific evidence of this effect on people. So, if they did this in 2012, before they even had 5G rolled out, I wonder what it will be now. Now, like Beth said, there is not the 5G research out there to say that it's safe. So the burden of proof needs to be on the cellular companies and it needs to be on the FCC. With the ruling of the Supreme Court on the East Coast, we know that um, they haven't had that burden of proof and you can't have the same companies regulating themselves. That would be like the cannabis companies regulating themselves. They need to be regulated by someone that doesn't have a stake in it. So um, there's been some question about whether there's really 5G in Mitchell. There is. There's at least three in Mitchell. I've gone around personally and um, tested all of the towers with this meter. It's a professional meter. Um, and it'll show you what the frequencies are. And most of the ones that I've seen, they'll go off the charts of peaking at 20 uh, milliwatts per meter squared. And you can use this to see what it's like, you know, in your house and, and wherever. Um, so I guess our concern here for the city council is you all are greatly concerned about the health of the community. And so are we. And we know you've been here late tonight. And we really want you to think twice about allowing more 5G in the community. And because 5G can be put on houses. It can be put in these internet cubes in your house. And there's no recourse for your neighbor. Okay, if they don't know if it's safe or not, how can we allow this into our community? Because literally it could be hundreds of these all around, okay? We already know people are having side effects. But the other thing is it allows for surveillance, data mining, and people can track everything you do and they can t dial it up. And one thing I found interesting that I didn't know this until the other night when I was looking is insurance companies do not insure for long-term damages from electromagnetic radiation emitted by these towers. 5G cell tower radiation and electromagnetic <coughs> fields are all repeatedly classified as high risk and compared to asbestos in insurance white papers. So what's the city's liability risk for allowing these 5G antennas to be put up? And I would say, what's the liability for the FCC? Are they gonna be held accountable? 
So all in all, um, there are local ordinances that have been uh, restricting these 5G and small tel towers. I'm obviously not going to be able to go through all of those, but I do have information for you on where we can go about in doing that. But I'd please have you look at all that information, and um, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. We're adjourned.